sent me, calling me from this world, sending me into this world, a world that when he created it, we were told by my beautiful Moya, it was good. This world is good. This world is beautiful because the divine has touched it. But we know that this world is not also solely good and beautiful because it's tainted by sin. Your sin, my sin, has tarnished the goodness of this world. As I am talking right now, someone is having to flee their home because of someone's sin. Someone is dying because of someone's decision and choice, a wrong decision, a wrong choice. As you are sitting here, you are going through pain and suffering because of somebody's wrong decision, somebody's wrong choice. You have done the same to someone. That's the world we live in. That's the world he's asking us to walk into, a world touched by sin. The sin that has tarnished the goodness of this world. And that's the world Jesus comes into. And because the world is touched by sin, it will put a cross on his shoulder. Because this world is tainted by sin, it will put a cross on your shoulder. Your sin, my sin. <coughs> And so it is inevitable that the call with it comes the cross. It's inevitable. Whether you like it or you don't, whether you scream and kick or you welcome it, the cross is inevitable because it is a world that is now touched by sin. So I want us to hold that as a background for our call, our mission, our journey together. <clears throat> So already, when I'm saying call, we are assuming that there's one who calls. There's one who calls and gives the message and sends. Which also means there's the other one who responds, who listens to the message, the instruction, and goes. We come back to Jesus. The Father calls him to enter this world. <laughs> And I've already said, he will say that several times in the Gospels. So he comes into this tainted world to reveal God's goodness, God's mercy, God's beauty, God's extravagant love. This world is tainted as it is. Jesus comes in as the beauty of God. And in turn, he will call others to do the same, to reveal this beauty, this goodness of God, to spread this message that God is love, that God is life, and that's what you and I were created for. And so we know it very well that he calls the twelve, the apostles, his friends, that he goes here, there with them. In another instance, we find he has 72. He calls and he sends. He also calls individuals. The Samaritan woman, whom we saw yesterday, she was called in her own way, in her own situation. We saw she went and spread the good news of I've met the Messiah. The man he healed. That Libyan, he called him, found him in his situation, called him, and he was sent. <coughs> to be called is something special. I don't know if there are primary school teachers here. If there are not, think of yourself when you were in grade one, grade two. You know when you call a grade one child or grade two child, and you send them. Have you ever seen the smile? Mm -hmm. Or think yes. of yourself when the teacher calls you, it makes you feel big, mm -hmm. makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, it boosts 
still. There's something beautiful about being whole. You are here today. I am here today because the Lord called us to be here. <clears throat> he said to the Samaritan, I came all the way to this place to meet you. He came all the way to this white model place to meet you, to meet me. He called us. He's calling us, inviting us to be his co-workers, to work along with him, like he called the twelve, to work along with him, to build a kingdom of goodness, of beauty, of love. When we respond, we experience a certain peace that you cannot find. Whichever way you go, you cannot find that peace. It comes when we respond, and somehow life becomes <coughs> meaningful and fulfilling. Because his call is love and life. It's not like us at times we just call someone to use them. We call someone to just send them to do something for us. When the Lord calls, he calls us to come and experience love and life. That's what makes the difference. My parish is largely white, where I am. And you can kind of count the people of my skin. Um, the youth life is kind of dead, or was dead. And this bothered me, really bothered me. What can I do about it? But I don't understand the culture of this place. I don't even understand the youth of this place. Where do I start from? Forget about it yet. But it bothered me again and again and again until I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know. I'll just see what I can do about it. So I write to this lady. She says, sister, I've been thinking about it, but I've been trying to push it away. So the two of us get together. We go to our parish priest. We have a little youth group all in the parish now. It's not perfect. But I am so happy that that bother, that sleepless night over it, is gone and I'm at peace. When we respond to the call, there is a certain peace and happiness that comes with it. And he will call us in various ways. Sometimes when you talk call, you usually think of a light of an ababa and nana sister. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the call for each person because everybody is called. And there are also calls within a call, like I'm saying, okay, but you're talking about being called your regular sister. In my sisterhood, every day the Lord will call me to somewhere, to someone, to something, to that parish where I had to go and do something for the young people in that parish. And it gave me peace. Each one of us sitting here is being called, and it's an everyday thing. So he will call us in various ways. It could be through the experiences that bother us. Is there an experience that is bothering you? The Lord might be calling you through that experience. He will call, he will call us through someone. This weekend, we have had talks, invited to reflect. <clears throat> Through that, the Lord will call you to something if he has not called you already. Through the scriptures, he will speak to us and call us. Our encounters each day in our lives, circumstances we go through, the Lord will use those to call us. Are we paying attention? Is there something stirring in your heart? This weekend, what did it stir in your heart? Because through that stirring, the Lord is calling. And refusal to respond, because we can refuse. Refusal to respond, I think is like, you know what goes on in abortion clinics? The so-called unwanted babies. 
I get rid of this unwanted baby. And the Lord is stirring something in us, calling us, and we refuse. I think we turn our hearts into an abortion chain. Are you sitting here pregnant with something the Lord has put in you and you are saying it's an unwanted baby? Are you sitting here, the Lord is calling, something is staring, you don't want it, it's only a lump of cells. Have we already aborted? <coughs> and are we saying, I'm not willing to stop? We might not abort, we might apply some birth control methods. I will answer only once. Lord, I'm already doing this in the chaplain. Lord, I'm already doing this in my family. It's enough. I want child already. Birth control methods. I cannot have a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. Are we doing the same with God's call? He called me once and that's it. No more. We might not have both, but we might apply some other birth control methods. Is that me? <coughs> Let us check. Maybe I have a sleepless night. The day is heavy. Could it be because I'm going through an abortion? Could it be because I have aborted? I'm not talking of physical abortion. I'm talking about the abortion when God calls and we refuse. Could that be what's causing my sleepless night? Could be that is what is taking my peace away? Responding demands that you get up and you leave your comfort. The father calls the son and he sends him into this world. He gets up and he leaves the heavenly comfort to be one of us vulnerable human beings. He calls Peter. Peter has to get up and leave his tasty fish, chase after human beings. <clears throat> Matthew has to leave his monies from his tax collecting job. Joseph gives up his dream. He probably dreamt of having 10 sons or 12 sons like his grand grandparents in his Jewish line. And now he has to leave that dream and get married and bring up a child who's not even his biological child. Ruth leaves her people. You have to get up and leave your comfort zone. I said we are entering into Holy Week. Where we will see a Jesus who not only left the comfort of heaven, but now he has to live even the comfort of his life, the comfort of his mother's house. He braves it all. Leaving the comfort of his mother's house. Through the Gethsemane experience, the nakedness on the cross, giving up his life for you and for me. That's the journey we will walk beginning today. He braved it all for you to have life, for me to have life. And this weekend, we are here. We braved it too. I think that's something we need to be thankful for. He said to us, come away, come stay with me this weekend. And we braved it, and we came. But a response 
comes in various ways. You either respond with haste, or you are hesitant, or you drag your feet. I'm sure you have an experience of calling your kids and you look how they respond. You might call once, twice, thrice. And one might be glued to their gadget. They are calling them. They are glued to their gadget. One is in bed. They will not get up. You are calling them. They even, you know, cover themselves. Another is busy on WhatsApp. Is that you? Is that me? God is calling. I pull the blanket. I'm busy on WhatsApp. I will not get up. As a parent, at the end of the day, when you get to know your kids, you might not waste time. You know which one to nanga to, to call, because you know how that one will respond. <laughs> we complain. One person is doing everything. She's the one here. She's the one there. She's the one there. What do you want God to do if he's going to call and all you do is pull a blanket? If God calls, and all you do is to stick to your gadget. But he knows that if I call this one, she will run. You know what to do. <coughs> if we as parents are doing that, what do we want God to do? So maybe before we complain that so and so, everything seems to be so and so, tend to yourself first. And why is that? <coughs> then there are others probably want to respond, but somehow genuinely they feel I'm incapable. They feel I'm unworthy. Mm -hmm. That's a natural excuse. That's a natural response somehow. But God doesn't call you because you are worthy. God doesn't call you because you are capable. God calls you because he knows he can qualify you for that call. So it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about what God can do and what God is seeing that he can do through you, in you. Are we willing to put that excuse aside? In the name of the Lord, the if God cannot call you to what you are not capable of, because He qualifies us. So this weekend, part of my sharing is giving you an evaluation sheet. Not to evaluate this place. <laughs> <laughs> Not to evaluate the organizers. Not even to evaluate me. <laughs> but to evaluate who? Yourself. Thank you. <laughs> An evaluation sheet. I think that's the beauty of being the last one. Because they have all said all that we needed to hear. I'm only handing evaluation sheets. So the first evaluation question. So this weekend, as you are leaving your home, as you are about to leave your home, how do you think you've responded? How do you think you've made God feel? Because God has called you. How have you made God feel by the way you responded? How have you responded? We were encouraged to create silence, to be with him. Did you try to do that? That's for your own evaluation. Did you try to spend that time with him, with yourself and him? Did you try to have the discipline of saying to my gadget, take a rest? <coughs> Did 
we properly dragged our feet. Maybe there are some of us who are really the consignor. You can drag in your feet. Ah, sharing a room with someone, with two people. <coughs> <Eric>? <laughs> words and put them in my mouth for this purpose because you are not far from the kingdom I want to believe that the Lord is looking at you and loving you and saying you are not far from the kingdom because there are probably people who tend to tell away but maybe for genuine reasons but maybe there are people who say no way but discomfort of sharing a room Imagine Jesus saying to the Father, Dad, you mean I leave heaven, I go down there, that dusty place? Really? And turns to the Holy Spirit and says, Maybe, why don't we ask him? <laughs> Imagine him say that. Not only this dusty earth, but the end of 33 years of mingling with dust, then he's killed. You mean that? You mean really? He doesn't say that. The disciples were with him not for two nights. Three years they were with him. You remember they had no base? Their pockets didn't have a whole lot of pounds to stay in hotels. <laughs> I can imagine a scenario, a situation where these four guys, some nights they had to bundle together in one room. Not one night, not two nights. I imagine there are times where they needed to just bundle together because they were on the move. So we clap hands for ourselves because we also, you know, said I'm willing, I'll leave the comfort and come and share it with someone. And come to be in the place that is this, that and the other, whatever the food is this, that and the other. But for you, Lord, yes. I will say yes. And I go. And maybe there are some of us who also jumped at the idea, at the opportunity. And we just said, here I am, Lord. I will come. So we've come, we've prayed, we've heard. What next? My second say. We've come, we've heard. What next? God is calling us as we sit here. God has called us this weekend. Because he wants you to respond to something that will bring you peace, to something that will bring you happiness. And that is what you need to bring to the world. This world tainted by sin and darkness, whether we like it or not. And you are to bring this goodness and this peace to this world. What is your response? What will you choose? Choose an abortion? Choose to keep the baby? Or it's already sterilization has happened? And I don't know how that method is going to last. It's the five years one. For five years sterile? And it was just an overnight one. So I can wake up today and let this core, this seed inside me grow. What's my response? But before I'm going to ask where to do 
do another lot where it's just immediate and that's happened. Because it has to start from the heart. My Lord, before you can go and sit and say, in the Lord, I'm going to go and sit and say, in me first. Don't worry, I'll call your name too. <laughs> Instructs and those who've been called sit and listen. So, following the call and the response comes attentive listening, comes the school of instruction. And the reason is obvious. And this instruction happens in various ways. But first of all, he calls them to be with him. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. He called the twelve to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message. Before he sends them out, he calls them to be with him. And I think this weekend was about that. Called first to be with him here before we can go out. You know, God loves company. God loves company. He doesn't want to be on his own. And so that's why Jesus says, when two or three gather, I am, when you gather in my name, I am there. No invitation is needed. So the moment we walked through that gate, the whole lot of us, Gathered here in his name. We didn't really need to say, Why don't we? You know, those prayers you do, but no, no, he is already there. He has said it. So I'm not to have a and maybe that's a way of saying Jesus will come. But he's already there because he has said it. His word is true. It's not me. Where two or three gather in my name, I am there. So when you say to Nobuko Kai, I'm saying that you need to say, I'm ready. He's already there. Maybe we should change and say, Lord, we welcome you. Thank you for being here. How much God loves our company. The sad thing is that when we gather in His name, we sometimes forget that He is there with us. And so we ignore His presence. That's the saddest thing. He is there. He's been here with us right now. He is here with us. But when we forget, then we ignore His presence. And instead, we gather in the name of money. We gather in the name of squabbles. We gather in the name of differences. So automatically, when we gather in the name of squabbles and differences and money and whatever, <coughs> our attention goes where? <coughs> to those, whatever that has gathered us. And this one who came running with a big smile sits there. I wish he can show us his face sometimes when we do that. And of course, we will live with emptiness. We live with bitterness. Because that's what happens when he's sidelined. But I hope this weekend was not that. <coughs> So if you leave this place with some emptiness, maybe ask the question, what did I pay attention to? So they are with him <coughs> to go through some formation. They are with him to experience love. What is love? And in the person of Jesus, we see what love looks like. We experience what love is like. We taste what love is like. We touch what love is like. And what love does is love transforms. 
<clears throat> you can't be in the presence of love and nothing happens. So they are with him so that they touch, they taste, they see love. He came this weekend to taste, to touch, to see, to experience love who is God. And I hope that's been your experience somehow. And love transforms all things. Jesus is that love. So they are with this love, this person, to get transformed. They are with this person so that they get to know him, to love him, to trust him, before they can go out there. So that when they go out, they go and talk about that personal experience. Father said yesterday, you know, they are persecuted and they say we cannot stop to talk about what we experienced, what we saw. So he has gathered us so that we can experience him before we can go out there. Is the God that you talk about a God of your experience? When you leave this place, the God you will go and talk about, is he a God of your experience? Many a times, some of us, my God, our God, is not a God of our personal experience. It's the God of the experience of the church. There's nothing wrong with that. Father, talk to us about this church. Sometimes the experience is the God of my cheetah, the God of my family. As I said, you are born into that family and you take it for granted. We need to personalize the experience with Jesus. It has to move from being the experience of the church to being in my experience. From the experience of my family to my experience. There is a difference when you meet someone and they tell you what they have seen as opposed to what they had. And maybe, maybe our telling of this God is not changing someone because it's not the God of our experience. It's the God of someone's experience. Is God a God of my personal experience? Because that's what changes someone when I talk to them. That's what changes someone as I move about exhibiting what I have seen and tasted and touched. They spend time with him so that they can know his voice. John chapter 10 verses 4 to 5. The sheep, my sheep know me, they know my voice, and they follow. So they spend time so that they can know the voice, to be able to differentiate it from many other voices. Sometimes we are caught in wrong company. We are found in wrong places, <coughs> caught up in wrong places, because we mistakenly believe the wrong voice. We thought it was his voice, only to realize it wasn't. And we need such a time to learn to attune, to learn to identify his voice from the many voices. The turmoils that we go through in our personal lives, in our family lives, our workplaces, there will be many voices in that turmoil. But there will be one voice one true voice and you need to learn to identify that voice or else you risk you risk following the wrong voice and you know the end result they spend time with him so that they can be instructed so that they can be reshaped rewired in their way of thinking in their way of seeing and judging that's what I call the process of transformation. And we need that. I say this world is tainted by sin. So as a result, we no longer know how to think properly, to choose properly, to will properly. We need him to put us through a school that will help us to do that. 
or else we will go out there with half-baked information, with twisted messages. Have you ever sent someone and when they get there, your message is twisted? <laughs> so many times. You know the end result of that. So we stay with him so that we hear clearly, so that we don't go out there and take a twisted message because that's disastrous. So I already said, he calls us through our circumstances, through those situations again, he forms us. You know the famous story of the man born blind. He goes through some kind of formation until he comes to realize who this person is. And I'm sure he goes out and he tells. The centurion, whom we will hear about, he's standing there, he's participating in the killing of this person. It was through that experience, as horrible as it looked, at the end of it, he stands there and says, surely he was the son of God. From the experience of killing this person and not realizing through that somehow the Lord is working something and he comes to realize. An invitation to see God calling you, calling me, and forming us through our experiences. That painful experience you are going through right now. That hard situation you are going through right now. Could that be my road to my formation to whatever the Lord wants me to see and hear? <clears throat> Can we see God forming us, doing something through those painful and tragic situations in our lives? And he's not asking us to do what he did not do. His whole life was one thing after the other. When we find ourselves saying, it's one thing after the other. <laughs> it didn't start on the cross. It just got heightened there. But before that, they had been wanting to kill him. Remember? Listening being instructed takes time in discipline. If you rush with a half-baked message, we've already said it's disaster. Try to reflect on some of the situations in your life where you responded, where you acted, on half-baked messages. Were you rushed to tell a half-baked message? You know what that was like. We need to spend time with him. So when they were saying to us yesterday, take time to reflect, to be silent, to be with yourself, to be with him. It's so that he can rewire us. It's so that he can reshape us so that he can help us give us eyes, new eyes, to see as he sees, to judge as he judges, left to ourselves. Part of this formation involves learning to become family, learning to live with one another, to listen to one another, to discern God's will together. I hope synodality rings in your head. So, the synodal church, it started from the honor, not even from the fathers of the church or the leaders, from the honor. He forms them so that they can do that, learn to live together, learn to hear his voice together, learn to discern his will together, learn to iron differences, I think that's why in the church we take time. 
You know, they didn't walk into the seminary one day, tomorrow they are back. It took time. We are around, she didn't give her mother's house and walk in and they said, dress up now. The way she's looking, it took time. It took time. She didn't walk in from here and over to yeah, she has come. Ah, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> to learn to be together, to hear the voice together, to descend together. But is that the case? My son, is that the case in your chitta? <laughs> They had to learn to have humility, to be flexible, to give in to each other. They had to learn to have namkuru, have namvik. You know, those with the hash, the chielas, there was nothing like the chielas. <laughs> 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 those with the hash. They had to learn to have humility. There's no such a thing, it's just that we don't need it. them friends before they could go out there. They had to learn to be friends. But it did not take away their individuality. Peter remained Peter. James remained James. But they learned to be friends. Muriko. Are you friends with the rest of them? Right in this room. Have we learned to look here and look here and become friends? But actually, I'm just one of us.
Those who are with me gather. Those who scatter are not with me. If we are scattering, we are not with him. We need formation. And this weekend has been about that. So that we can hear once more correctly his message. So we don't distort it. So this thing is crucial. And again, think of that one child who is a pleasure to talk to among your kids, among your as you go. Because when you stand before that child and not I am talking to you. <laughs> Think of that child. And you take out your evaluation sheet. <coughs> what kind of a child have you been this weekend? <coughs> what has been the quality of your listening this weekend? And what transformation has taken place or is taking place because we see it in the disciples they are being with him leads to a transformation what transformation has taken place in you as a community so there is you what kind of listening as a community as a people gathered here what did we hear the Lord say? What transformation has taken place? Post COVID, we've been told COVID has left us, whichever way it has left us, we know it. What's the Lord saying to us as a chaplaincy? What was the quality of your listening? And what did you hear? What did we hear the Lord say to you? What did we hear the Lord say to us? After the listening, the formation, the learning how to be together, to bridge our differences, comes the sending, comes the taking the message. So we come to the end of our retreat. We came responding to a call. We sat, we listened, we were formed. And now comes the moment we will be sent. Some documents of the church in the famous Vatican II, I'm sure we are aware of these documents, Vatican II documents. There's a quote that says, the pilgrim church is missionary by her very nature. Since it is from the mission of the Son, and the mission of the Holy Spirit that she draws her origin in accordance with the decree of God the Father. The church is missionary by very by her nature. So as we end the retreat, we will have mass. At the end of the mass, what are the last words we hear? And I will not parry the I just heard shun, 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 shun. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Go and, and spread the word. Go. Spread the gospel. Thank you. The mass is ended. Go. Don't stay here. <laughs> Don't keep being here. But go. A word we hear several times in the scriptures. So the mass is is picking what already is being lived by Jesus and the disciples even before the New Testament. Abraham, go. Abraham, go. Where? To where I will show you. Moses, go. Go back to Egypt, to my people, set them free. Joseph, get up and go. Take the baby with you. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, go, go and tell my disciples that I am alive. The same for the women at the tomb. They are to go. The 
a star and bird ascension they are gazing. Before that, it tells them, you will go to the whole world. They are people on the move. That's the nature of the church. We are not people who are comfortable in the seat, in one seat. We are people on the move. That's why the end of them must go. Don't remain here. And we will meet Jesus after he has been with them. He sends them to go and heal, to go and proclaim the good news, to set prisoners free. In Mark chapter 5, verse 19, we meet a man is healed of his demons. Let's have a test. They are too quiet. So he meets this man chained and everything. He heals the man. Who wants to end the story for us? How does it end? And I'm talking to Catholics, I know that. <laughs> so the man wants to go with him. Which one? He wants to go with him. I said Mark chapter 5, verse 19. So from 18, as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. To the 12, to the 72, he gives a different message, sends them somewhere. Mm -hmm. To another, he sends somewhere. We are people on the move. <coughs> and Jesus is doing the same with us. Go, go and tell what you received. You received it freely. Freely go and give. But we paid. <laughs> we paid for their water. We paid for their blankets. We paid for the food. <laughs> but what he has done in us, freely you've received. Freely go and give. At the end of Mass, go, go the Mass is ended. Go and tell what the Lord has done for you. Go and tell what you have experienced. Father said, I think we had a talk on Mass last night, wasn't it? Go and share what you experienced. One important thing, at Mass, what we experience, what we receive is body broken, blood poured and shed. Go and tell that. Go and live that. Go and be bread broken for someone. Go and be blood poured out for someone. And how does that happen? If not through those painful experiences that demand you to be bread broken so that the family your, your environment, your community can come together. He pours his blood, breaks his body, so that we can be united. At the end of Mass, go and become that. Don't go and be comfortable. That's not his way. <coughs> so what did you receive this weekend? What experience did you have this weekend? Because that's what you will go and spread. That's what you will go and become. What's the message you will greet those you left behind? When Baba Nyani opens the door, what's the message you will give him? You must bank this right. How can I say that? Anyway, 
ndabonwa tuka mazerea cyangwa zina cyo bivo oh i had this encounter with the lord something moved in my heart something happened to me i feel lighter i feel different or oh, i see it different it's the same situation the same people the same environment but something has happened to my eyes that somehow all that was black i'm beginning to realize oh there's a white spot there that i didn't see before what has been my experience because that's what i will take back what has happened to me that's what i will take back There are a whole lot of people in darkness. This world is dark. As beautiful as it is because it's touched by God. At the same time, we've darkened it. Your sin, my sin, our wrong choices, our mistakes have darkened this world. So there is darkness in this world. And there is someone who is in the dark. There is someone who is lifeless. Because the one person who was meant to take a message that will bring light to that person. That will bring life to that person. Is not doing it. Because the one person who's meant to go and be the light for that person takes negativity and adds to the darkness that is already there. <coughs> there is someone somewhere who needs you. There is someone somewhere the Lord is asking you to go to. Will you take light or you go and add to the darkness that is already there? By what you will say, what you will do, what you will think, and what you will fail to do. What we are going to go and tell them out there will have an impact on next year's retreat. Someone will either want to come or they will never think of coming because of what you said to them, because of what I've said to them. What we will go and say out there will have an impact on someone's life, on a choice somebody is going to make for today and into tomorrow. When you go on pilgrimages, you bring by gifts, right? And this community is, is full of kind people. These people you see here, you see them? These people have been kind to me, and I mean kind to them. I don't know. Have they been kind to you? Yes. yes. To me, these people have been kind. Some have gone to places that I've never been, but have a beautiful Fatima rosary that makes me feel like I've been to Fatima. Somebody just, although there is that poor sister there, bring her a rosary. And it brought a smile to me. We've come here. If we were on a pilgrimage, we can wait, wait in your suitcases because they will be overweight, right? Mm -hmm. Did you overweigh your suitcase before you packed it this morning? Okay. We came on your feet within this place. What are you taking back? What's in your suitcase? If it's overweight, what is in it? What have you bought from a map passage that you left behind my passage? <laughs> For the children and the friends you left behind, what are you buying? What have you bought? What are you carrying? What are you overweight with? So you call someone you know and trust and you give them a message, an urgent message. Jesus has called us and is giving us an urgent message because he trusts us. Just think of it. The Lord has trusted you this much to give you his message. How does that make you feel? Consider this privilege from the master because it is a privilege. And I end with what Father said, it's a synodal church. So we are called and sent not alone, but together. 
and I won't say much because we've been talking a lot about this togetherness. He sends us with companions on the journey. That's God's vision. God doesn't do just me. One man's show. Because it's hard when you're on your own. Because at times it's even impossible on your own. It's enjoyable with others, isn't it? It's true. God is not a solitary person. He's communion. Community. And he's asking us to go on the journey together. When he calls Abraham, he doesn't go on his own. He has to walk with Lord. Moses goes with other people of Israel. He gives him Aaron to accompany him, Mary and Joseph, Jesus and the twelve. So the church, in as much as it is missionary, but it is together, not as individuals. And that's what makes this church. So God is pleased to save us as a nation, as a people, not as individuals. Would you want to go to heaven and just be on your own in heaven? <laughs> Imagine. No. <clears throat> so, together he calls. He calls us to move together, to be together. So if we are to be true to him, we don't do it alone. We don't leave it to one person. He says to us, we are salt of the earth. When you put salt in the osari, you don't pick that one grain. You pick that one grain, surely what does it do? You take a whole teaspoon or whatever, isn't it? So if we're just going to prick one grain, it will not work. We just pick my chalabaya alone, it will not work. It means the whole lot of us. The priests, the brothers, the sisters, the horses, the whoever, everybody. Together. That's how salt works. So if he says we are salt, we have to be together. So the mentality that only I can do it, that's a delusion. The mentality that, see I write, that's sinful. So what I was saying, actually, if you forgot that one, you go back to confession. <laughs> <laughs> because that's not the church of Christ. The church of Christ is not, see I write, it's not, it's me alone, they can't do it together. And that's what effectively manifests the nature of the church. A pilgrim and missionary people of God. So the mission fails when we exchange roles. When we become the Jesus who calls, who gives the message, and who sends. Surely, Beata, what message do you have that can change the world? That I can stand in this place and think my thoughts and give you and say, go. Oh, no wonder the world is dark. Let's check. Am I exchanging roles? It's the him to call, to give the message and to send, not the other way around. I am to do it with companions. Am I willing? Am I open to that? From here, where to? So what part am I playing on this journey? We have this weekend to be invited. As you leave this place, not in of your same name, this moor. This moor. Man's way. Che. Why is our language? Che. Baba Masuwa ne Murie. So what have we heard as a chaplaincy? Where are we heading to from here? Not just as individuals, but together. Dr. Mazima, from here, where to? So to whom are we being sent? First of all, you as an individual, to whom are you being sent? What's the message? As a community journeying together, to whom are we being sent? What's the message? Are we willing to let go of the comfort of our zones, the comfort of wherever I am, to go to my family, to my friends, to my colleague, to the chaplaincy community? 
this holy week, they're going to walk a journey of someone who was willing, willing to the end. Will I be that? Because if not, it's pointless. He shed his blood for nothing. Ganando para ni David, 